Hello everyone, welcome to another trailer time. I wasn't expecting to see trailers really uh, on the Tuesday of not E3, but we've got some. There's some trailers here. They are, we, we're a trailer in. And not even like just a bunch of indie stuff. We got some like pretty big things. There's a Battlefield 2042 trailer for their new season. We got new Elder Scrolls uh, MMO thing. We got some Xenoblade Chronicles 3, some F1, some Sanic, a, a bunch of stuff. So I'm going to shut up and let's, you know, let's do it. Let's watch some trailers. Wait a minute. I just realized that this is a 19 minute video for The Last Starship. Yeah, we're not going to watch that. Apparently this is a new game that they put on Steam, but I'm not watching 19 minutes. Holy shit. We will watch eight minutes of terrible Sonic footage. That's coming up soon. Uh, let's move over to an NC Soft game. This is the Project M trailer. It says in seeing, in counter, in see. Like, what is, why? Is this just SEO? That's weird. It's a weird title. I shouldn't be one to talk about titles after yesterday's JPNN. What do we got? What? Huh? The Herodic Cube. That thing's gonna cost you 110,000 open. Honey, Manyake Maria. Whoa! What a bomb? <laughs> the hell's going on here? I'm blocked. I'm kind of intrigued. It looks pretty good. Just if? What? I don't. Is that like a proper. Just if? I don't think that's the accurate. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think that's what he actually said. That was kind of cool. I have no idea what we just saw, but it's how that works. Next trailer. Fire Girl. Hack and Splash Rescue DX. Ten years ago, they attacked. Oh, yeah. I, I saw this. I think we saw this last year. That's me right there. This looks cool as shit. Ooh. 
procedurally created missions. Oh my god, she saved a bear. Wait, the ultimate edition? Oh, this game already launched? We pet the dog. So this is like the upgraded version. It comes out June 22nd. PS5, PS4, Nintendo Switch, and Xbox, as well as GOG and Steam. Crazy. Looks, I, I thought that looked pretty good. Someone in chat said it controlled uh, kind of poorly. So, I mean, I can't speak to that, but maybe it did. I don't know. Next trailer is called Game Deck. I did not stutter. Let's check a look. Game deck, a profession invented at the end of the 22nd century. What? A combination of a skilled virtual reality player and a private detective solves crimes in virtual worlds. Become a game deck. I'm already kind of Face a game deck. Face unique challenges like disputes, engaged players, realistic simulation. Oh, it's like Westworld. Relaxing in the sunlight of the Wild West, or making new friends. Use custom game deck skills and tools like influence, deductive reasoning, whisker mats, gaming couches, on a Nintendo Switch console. Warning, becoming a game deck may cause love for pen and paper RPGs induce nostalgia and urge you to make choices in your own unique way would you like to know more i see what they're doing here i see what they're doing the old game deck it looked all right i think uh zeke's maybe played that already because that's the switch version so if you want to check out some footage of the game probably find it on his channel at least according to the chat Next trailer, Dungeon Drafters. This is the Steam announcement trailer. What? Very happy music. Oh my god, cards. Okay. Dungeon Drafters. Wish list on Steam. Do they it says Dungeon Drafters is a mystery dungeon adventure set in a world where magic is cards and cards are magic. Explore ancient runes, loot rare cards, and employ clever combos to defeat your foes and build the legendary spell deck that could save the world. Might be kind of fun. Might be alright. Next trailer. Spellforce 3 Reforced. This is the release trailer. Let's check a look. I think we watched one of these trailers and chats that they were really good. Like the Spellforce series was really good.
the graphics look kind of fun. It's available now. Oh, that's a THQ Nordic. Huh. All right. Well, hey, if you couldn't get enough of that Sonic footage the other day that we watched from IGN, well, we've got eight more minutes. So buckle the fuck up, because here we go. Wait, why does Sonic's this look done like shit? a lot in 30 years. He's been a pioneer of the high-speed 2D platformer, an Olympic athlete, a respectable kart racing enthusiast, a fighter, a TV star, and a Hollywood blockbuster movie star as well. But he's never done open world, and Sonic Frontiers fixes to change that. I was fortunate enough to be one of the first people outside of Sonic Team to go hands-on with Sonic Frontiers, and let me just say, if you're worried about how the blue blur will fare in this unfamiliar genre, well, I think Crush 40 probably put it best. Open your heart. It's going to be all right. Wow. This guy was clearly paid. The first paid. thing that struck me about Sonic Frontiers was how uniquely somber and serene it was right from the outset. After flying into a wormhole with Tails and Amy, Sonic finds himself separated from his friends and all alone on an isolated island, with nothing but an AI voice guiding him to collect the Chaos Emeralds. There's no one for Sonic to bounce quips off of, no energetic crush that was a joke, soundtrack, by the way. just wide open fields as far as the eye can see. There's an air of mystery in Sonic Frontiers, and it's a vibe that's driven home even further by the beautiful yet minimalist piano melodies that accompany Sonic as he explores the island. There's a lot of pop in. This game's pretty early though. Maybe that'll get fixed. All of this is a very intentional choice. I asked Sonic Team head Takashi Izuka to describe how the tone of Sonic Frontiers differs from previous Sonic games. And he said, past games in the Sonic series have taken different tones depending on their stories and themes. This time, these mysterious islands are the game's major Oh, this setting. launches this That's year? That's our artists have worked hard to create a mysterious okay. mood. Maybe of course, the big new change in Sonic Frontiers is the shift from purely linear levels to a huge open world where Sonic can freely run in any direction. But Sonic Team doesn't like to use the term open world to describe Sonic Frontiers gameplay, instead referring to its style as being open zone. Open world games like Zelda or other AAA games fundamentally have RPG or adventure worlds. For Sonic, the core here is a 3D action game. Our basic idea was to have that take place in open space. What sets Sonic Frontiers apart is this different approach to an open game world. Having played Sonic Frontiers for so about it's an open hours, world with a different it's take. easy to see what Izuka-san means. Sonic Frontiers' open zone design is very different from any other open world I've played. It's a giant playground. Every few feet, there's a bumper spring that bounces you like a pinball between five other bumpers before putting you on one of the many grindable rail tracks. Or a speed ramp that sets you on a completely different path leading to some other collectible or reward or a line of rings that you can lightspeed dash into. Essentially, they've taken that core appeal of every Sonic level having multiple paths that eventually loop back around to the main one and applied that to these giant non-linear open zones. One thing that has to be noted is that very few of these elements are built into the environmental design, meaning that rails, platforms, boost rings, and so on are just inexplicably floating in the air all around, which isn't totally unusual for a Sonic <laughs> game, but it feels especially jarring in Frontiers in particular because of the frequent and sudden pop-in of these objects and the otherwise very naturalistic art style. Of course, it's worth emphasizing that this gameplay and the version that I played were from an early build, but this is definitely an area that I would hope to see improvement in the final version. Beyond huh. that, there are also a wide variety of puzzles and challenges that are littered throughout the zone and completing them is how you uncover sections of your map. Most of these are very simple, requiring you to orient a statue the correct way, quickly hop back and forth between colored tiles, or use Sonic's new side loop ability to draw circles around certain objects in the environment to interact with them. The best ones though are the races against the clock where you have to get from point A to point B in a limited amount of time. The openness of Frontier's level design makes straightforward races like these a ton of fun because you have to try and improvise a path to the end that might not be immediately obvious. So what we're watching is all of the same footage that we've already seen from them, which is probably there a publisher. There are some exceptions, but combat in traditional uh, Sonic games thing, generally instead of an IGN thing, thing but with voiceover. Jumping, rolling, or using a homing attack into enemies at the right time. That changes in Sonic Frontiers. 
which now has you fighting all sorts of wandering enemies and mini-bosses using an all-new array of incredibly flashy attacks. It's not all style and no substance, though. Sonic is able to quickly dodge... I wonder why the publishers the didn't want them to have commentary together, over it in the first place. This seems kind of weird. Right timing. His homing attack also feels much more powerful, landing with a ton of impact and keeping Sonic stuck to his enemy, allowing for a flurry of follow-up strikes. One of the things I really appreciate about the combat from what I played is that there are usually multiple ways to deal with specific enemies. Like, take for example this guy, who has an impenetrable shell that he can expand into spinning blades and throw at you. One way to deal with him is just to carefully... Is this for the switch? I'm not sure. So you don't get hit by the blade. I don't know the platforms. But if you do Chat that, was the saying it was. damage him is small. To increase that window, you can either parry the blades and knock them away right before they hit you, or you can even use Sonic's side loop ability to encircle the enemy, which causes the shell to go flying upwards. Defeating these enemies will reward you with EXP that you can use to purchase new skills from a skill tree, which gives Sonic Frontiers a really nice feeling of power progression, even in just the relatively short amount of time that I played. Some of the later skills that you can get are just unbelievably cool, and it's super satisfying to see Sonic Team experiment with different ways that Sonic can attack enemies beyond just spins, jumps, and bumps. In addition to these smaller enemies, there are also a handful of enormous world bosses that I had to contend with. These are near Shadow of the Colossus-esque in their scale, with one in particular against a beast named Asura requiring Sonic to bait the Titan to slam the ground and then boost up its arm in order to reach the weak spots on its head. It's an ambitious boss battle, far beyond anything I've seen in the Sonic series to date, but it's also the part of the game that needs the most work. Far too often, I'd fly off the boss's arm without knowing why, or I'd get to the top and for some reason lack the momentum needed to actually reach the head. At least he's calling Sonic it out. hunt down and defeat these bosses in order to collect portal gears, which open up portals that lead to bite-sized linear stages, done in the style of previous Sonic games, giving Sonic Frontiers a nice mix of both old oh, and new Oh, so the styles. old stuff does exist. These classic levels each come with a handful of optional goals, like being the level under a certain time, collecting all the red rings, and so on, with each goal rewarding you with a vault key, which are needed to unlock the coveted Chaos Emeralds. Sonic Frontiers is an exciting new step forward for the Sonic series into Uncharted territory, and based on my time with it, Sonic Team seems to have hit upon a winning formula. There's certainly still work to be done before it's released during the holiday season. There's a lot of distracting pop-in, there's a fair amount of bugs still left to be squashed, and the big boss fights could do with some tweaking. But ultimately, my time with this early build answered the one question I had on my mind. Will Sonic's one-of-a-kind gameplay translate into an open world? The answer is a resounding absolutely. Thanks for watching, and tune into IGN for more Sonic Frontiers coverage as part of IGN First. I and mean, if you and say so, I'm, I'm not a Marvel, or a Marvel fan. I'm not a, a Sonic fan. At least, I like, I don't dislike Sonic, but I've never really been a fan of the games. Weird? Uh, uh, really weird stuff to come from um, Sega in terms of how IGN was allowed to cover that. It's a really strange way to... Uh, to handle that in my opinion back to our regularly scheduled oh, fucking jesus anyways sorry i think this is dnf duel all anime kind of looks the same so i'm having a hard time here uh this i think it's troubleshooter play uh is a video here oh, how about this He's got a gun and a sword. Automatically badass. He looks great. Have a good time. Go ahead, was that? I'm into that. I'm about that. That looks badass. Here's a game that kind of popped up on my radar recently when I got a steering wheel. Uh, this is F1 Manager. This is the gameplay trailer. 
This is not a challenge for the faint-hearted. Oh, wait. Hold With on. It's now occurred to me how wrong I am. F1, the racing game, comes out July 1st. This is F1 Manager, a game about managing racing. Fuck. 20 best drivers in the world come together to take on some of the world's most historic circuits. And that legacy continues today. It's lights out, and away we go. Oh, wait, there's rate. So do you just want I love racing? power, I love power. Just stay in the car for a second. There's not much in it at the front, with the two cars constantly vying for first place. It's a thrilling battle with neither driver giving an inch. We might still be early in the season, but that doesn't mean we can sit back and relax. Everything is up for grabs, and nothing is certain at this stage. Here we go with the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. I think we should be satisfied with uh, the step we've done at least here. This, this seems bizarre. Look, look. Look. Strap yourselves in. This is Formula One. I wouldn't mind checking that out for like a one-off stream just so I can understand like what you I've never played a manager game is what I'm saying and I know they're beloved because they sell very well I just uh I have no idea like what you do in them apart from the video that we just saw Anyways, the Xenoblade Chronicles 3 marketing seems to be firing up. I think this is a new zone called I, I and Eos on the switch. It's about a minute long. Let's see what this is. Wow, that looks pretty. These people are magicians when it comes to getting shit to run on the Switch. Wasn't that guy in the first game? Or maybe the second game? I wonder if we're going to get, uh, we'll probably be seeing more trailers for that stuff over the next couple of months or next couple of weeks. Cause that comes out at the end of July. So we're two months out, 60 days. Yeah. We'll get a bunch more trailers for that. I am sure it's looking good so far. Evil West, the release date reveal trailer. Here we go. I have a bad feeling about this. Same. Looks One wrong move and we're dead in the water. The one right move, and you could catch her and end this war. Young Rentier, still on your father's leash, I see. What did you see while Felicity was in your head? Death. Okay, let's dance. Wait, I thought we were. Oh, here we go, we're dancing. Yeah, that was predictable. Hmm. 
Looks like it could be kind of fun. Doesn't look too bad. Now, this next trailer, I hope I'm watching these in the appropriate uh, order. Minecraft put out a trailer for their new update. So hopefully I'm watching these. I think they are, at least by date. This is the wild update. It says, what will you uncover? Gotta watch out for that chicken. Wait, what is that? Is that a new biome? second trailer will tell us what this is this is called craft your path a little bit longer wait what it's steve Do the other Minecraft people have names, chat? Or just Steve? There's Steve and Alex. Dave and Bob, really? See a little bit of this gameplay. Abraham, Martin, and John. Nice. John Paul, George, and Ringo. Nice. What happens when you kill that guy? Huh. And, uh, they're still patching Minecraft. Still crushing it. Still crushing it. Next trailer is trailer for Battlefield 2042 Season 1 Zero Hour. Wait, don't we have a subscriber named Zero Hour? Uh, you picked the wrong username. I apologize for that. Here it is. Let's we'll see what happens. All right, so we need a hovercraft to go up that mountain. The Canadian U.S. research facility. A landslide exposed the interior, and enemy forces are being deployed to secure it. Oh, seeing this just makes me want to play Battlefield, but I know that it's not going to be what I want it to be. That's kind of cool. Trailer actually makes it look pretty good. Wait a minute. 
they did the gun with the music sound thing. Oh my god, it's a battlefield moment! Oh my god! That was crazy. So that comes, that launches uh, June 9th, which is Thursday. I kind of agree with all these comments on this video. Hats off to the trailer guy who actually knows how to make quality content. The people at DICE working on the trailer should make the actual game. They know what players want to see. Imagine if the game was actually as good as these trailers. That was a really good trailer. I didn't want to say it because uh, I was worried that I was going to be alone in my opinion. The trailer was really good. I kind of want to play it. It was all right. Maybe Thursday we'll download the old Battlefield and uh, check a look. They'll probably be paying some streamers to play that, don't you think? Huh. Play it for us, JP? I think I might. I think I might. Get that back. Oh, I'm not saying that I have a spot. I, they're not going to sponsor me to play that. Anyways, let's move on. We got a trailer for the Elder Scrolls Online High Isle Launch Cinematic. I think this is about a bunch of elves who smoke a bunch of skooma. So those are the main story characters. That's a Dark Souls character. Dark Souls character. Is this what people think uh, they're doing when, when people are talking about how Dark Souls needs accessibility? The people that are fighting on those comments are these, is this Dark Soul guy right here? Oh, wait, is he dead? Oh, he's a fucking zombie. Oh, they're good at it. Okay. Wow, they're kind of fucking this guy up now. I mean, I'm sure he's fine. That was a cool trailer. <gasps> He's pissed. How dare you insult Miyazaki san? I get a little cute tiger pet. Again, another cool trailer that uh, was a lot of fun to watch. I just, I don't know if I could play that game. You know? Uh, 
<sighs> hey, Steam Next Fest is happening again. Uh, this begins on June the 13th at 10 a.m. Pacific and runs all the way to the 20th. Uh, these are some of the games they're going to have there. Demos, demos, and more demos. More demos. This is Steam Next Fest June Edition, where developers from all over the world are giving you free access to demos of their upcoming games on Steam. All week, you can play as many as you want across all genres and wishlist the ones you love so you can be notified when the game officially launches on Steam. Oh, and while you're here, be sure to check out the schedule for all the developer live streams and the chats that are happening all week long. Isn't that... Uh... Speedrunner guy. We had we've had him on drop frames before. Spike. Yeah. That's him. Be sure to check out the schedule for all the developer live streams and the chats that are happening all week long, including the official event stream kicking I am it all off. Covering all one. the names. And new to Next Fest? Badges! Earn one for playing your first, your fifth, even your tenth demo. Hundreds of demos, oodles of fun. This is Steam Next Fest. Wait, what? Cult of the Lamb is going to be there? Ooh. 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 Well, we're going to have to check that out. We're going to have to check that out. We're going uh, to take a look at that one. This next trailer is the final trailer, I believe. And this is the Knowledge is Power Dragonlands launch cinematic for Team Fight Tactics. I've been told to stay away from this game by a lot of people. I don't know anything about it. Actually, that's wrong. I know some about it. Let's see how the trailer is. <gasps> Who's that guy? That's kind of cute. I'm just going to move on. They got bigger. Penguin one. Wait, that's a mobile game? I thought that was on oh no. Oh no. Get that shit out of here. That's it for trailer time. 
most likely we won't be doing another trailer time this uh, week because we have so many different events happening. If you want to watch any of those events, you can join us by going over to jpedia.net, clicking on the not E3 tab down below, or just going to itme.jp slash not, N-O-T, dash, little dash, E3. Check it out. Join us for that. If not, we'll see you on all the videos um, starting tomorrow. I guess with the Modern Warfare reveal and then the OTK Game Fest thing. Did I say 2022? I say, I look, it's the current year. It's not, I don't think I've gotten that promoted once. We'll see you guys then. Have a good day.